Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what I wanted to go over was the testing of a pressure switch with a digital manometer. All right, so we're trying to take the guesswork out of uh, why the furnace is not lighting. Okay, so if you were to turn heat on, which means that you're going to have a, a 24 volts from W to C, okay, in here because you have jumpered from R to W. All right, so 24 volts is on R. Okay, it goes to the thermostat and it comes back to the W as 24 volts. And then if you want to take a voltage reading from W to C, then you'll know that you have 24 volts to 28 and a half volts, um, telling the sequence of operation of your furnace to go ahead and turn on. So the sequence of operation goes as follows. The inducer motor turns on, okay? The, the next part of the sequence of operation is the pressure switch closes the electrical switch because it's reading negative pressure in um, water column, okay? It's a 27.6 inch water column equals one PSIG, and most of these pressure switches read under one water column, or, or at least under two um, inch water column. So they're very, very, very minimal amount of negative pressure makes these close. But basically what it's doing is it's making sure that this is running, okay? But let me get back to the sequence of operation. The inducer motor runs, okay, turns on, 120 volts goes to it. Then the pressure switch closes, the 24 volt electrical signal. Then the hot surface igniter right here turns cherry red, 120 volts applied to that. Then after that, the gas valve gets a 24 volt signal um, for three seconds and the flame rod has 90 to 110 volts going to, to the flame flame rod in here, okay, that looks like this, okay, it's a flame rod that's immersed in the flame, all right, this rod right here is immersed in the flame, and then a the control board is actually looking for a DC microamp reading back at the control board via the ground wire that's attached to the frame, okay, once it does that, there's a blower on delay for you know, about 20 seconds or so. It's waiting for the heat exchanger back here to warm up so it's not blowing cold air on the customer. Then after that, the blower motor will turn on and, and that is a sequence of operation. So if something turns on, so say the inducer motor turns on, pressure switch closes, but the hot surface igniter does not turn cherry red, then you know that there's a problem either with the voltage going to the hot surface igniter uh, or the hot surface igniter is bad, okay, or maybe the pressure switch did not close. So this is where we're going to target right here. There's a couple things that, that could be the problem and uh, it's rarely the pressure switch itself is the problem, okay? It could be, it could be the exhaust pipe right here could have a bird's nest in it, okay? Uh, the inducer motor may not even be turning on. Maybe that's why this isn't, um, this is not registering negative pressure. Another thing is you might hear rattling around in here while this is running. I'm not talking about the squeak when this thing turns off. I'm, I'm talking about a constant rattling inside. That could be the blower motor wheel uh, breaking apart. So some of these wheels inside are made in pl with plastic, unfortunately, sometimes, uh, and they're falling apart, okay? So that means that this needs to get replaced. But, but um, it could be that the condensate drain is clogged Okay, and the water is backing up up these tubes right here, and most of the time that is the problem. These, this should be part of the preventative maintenance schedule right here. Okay, um, if you have a tube that's kinked and and it's not allowing the water to drain, you know you could put a a cable tie on it. It applies pressure on all sides. Okay, so what it does is it pushes on the pipe on all sides and it basically takes the kink out of a pipe. So you can use that trick if you find that these uh, these are um, kinked. But anyway, um, if you have the water coming to the condensate trap and it's just backing up, backing up, backing up, then, then this pressure switch um, will not read properly, okay? And um, especially on the newer furnaces, all right? But this, this right here is not normally the problem, okay? 
Uh, there is a 24 volt signal. 24 volts comes in and it has to come through and then it goes directly back to the control board. This way the control board can give you an error code that says, hey, there's something wrong. It's not reading uh, the negative pressure at the pressure switch. Th these wires right here do not go in series with any other wires such as the flame rollout sensor or there is a, um, a plenum uh, heat sensor back here. It is not in series with these. This is coming from the board and going back to the board. This way the board knows to what error code to throw. Okay, um, and once again, you know, if you want, if you blow these out, you want to make sure that this is disconnected. All right, make sure that you're not getting any pressure into this. I would not advise sucking on these or anything like that. You're going to put too much pressure, negative pressure, on the pressure switch and possibly mess up the inside. All right, but if you're going to be blowing, say, 20 psi uh, through these pipes, you, you know, you disconnect right here, disconnect right here, disconnect right here, blow through them. Make sure that the condensate, maybe the condensate trap is clogged, but make sure also that the condensate line that's attached to this trap has at least an eighth of an inch of pitch per foot. But we normally in the field are typically going at at least a quarter inch of pitch per foot downwards or more. Um, but an eighth of an inch is, is normally the codes that we're following. Um, but uh, we typically pitch it much more than that because you don't want water sitting in the condensate um, pipe. But I've seen it where somebody doesn't re run the condensate pipe correctly, it goes back uphill a little bit, it clogs up, it, it, it you know, water sits between seasons, you know, maybe it's sitting there all summer and it just gets all gunky and, and um, and sludgy and, and and that's where the clog is so make sure that you disconnect this from the pressure switch and you blow these out um, but anyway right now I'm going to go ahead and show you how to uh, read the negative pressure with your water columnometer so we're going to go ahead and turn this on we're going to go ahead and connect this in you could also uh, make a little T that goes into here and stays in the switch in this way you can let this furnace run and and just watch and see if this changes okay that's another thing that you could do you just need a little quarter inch barb fitting okay and some excess piping from maybe another installation and you can do that as well um, this way you have the the full gamut of while the whole system is running you're checking your inch water column measurements okay but right now we're just gonna I'm just gonna show you a quick reading of this we're gonna turn the system on and uh, we're gonna go ahead and read it this is one of those service magnets that I've told you in other videos you can get for free right out of the microwaves, out of the magnetron. You have a scrap microwave or whatever, you can get two of these magnets right out of the microwave. Alright, so we're going to um, close the door switch. We're going to turn the power on, and right now we have it jump from R to W. Since I turned it off, uh, while the heat was running, we're waiting for that blower motor um, to say cool off the heat exchanger okay anytime you turn the power off to the furnace when you turn it back on the blower motor is going to turn on first and then after it uh, cools down the heat exchanger it's basically you know usually around 30 seconds or so um, then the sequence of operation will start with the inducer motor so your inducer motor is turning on and now we're getting a negative inch uh, water column reading okay so it's inches of water column and right now we're reading negative 3.18 these pressure switches are, are typically un reading under one inch water column okay so we're reading 3.2 so we don't have any problem with our lines right here I will tell you sometimes you're gonna have an intermittent problem because of the water in these traps so as the furnace is running it's creating water and it's coming into the trap, it's filling the trap up, backing up, and then you're getting your water column reading is, is going off, okay? Um, so you want to go ahead and make sure you blow them out, okay? Right now we got 3.24, so right now if the pressure switch was not closing the electrical contacts with negative 3.24 or 3.26 or whatever it is if it's not closing these electrical contacts yes then the pressure switch is bad okay but you want to always be aware 
you know, that it could be a couple other things. Like I said, the uh, exhaust pipe could be clogged, the lower motor wheel might be broken, you know, this screen could be clogged. But right now we're reading a proper water column reading, so everything is fine on this, okay? If you're reading, if you're only reading point two or point three or something like that inch uh, inch water column then then you have a problem okay and, and you need to then figure out what that problem is what we're going to do is we're going to turn our meter to volts right here and we're going to test right here to see, you just heard the burner turn on, okay? We're gonna test from here to see, and you have 27 volts. We're gonna do the same thing onto, onto the metal there, on that terminal, and the common, we have 27 volts again. So that tells us that this pressure switch is closed and that everything is working properly. But if we did not have 24 to 28 and a half volts, from here to common or from here to common then that means that this pressure switch is not electrical closing and that then you need to go ahead and check with your manometer here if you're getting the proper water, water column reading all right so then you just need to address what that problem is and a lot of times the furnace door will tell you the error code that this is reading right here before you take the door off you read the error code and it gives you uh, you know five or six potential things you know it just says look for you know look for the drain lines look for the exhaust lines look for a clogged hose the pressure switch could be bad inducer motor could be bad stuff like that all right i do have a lot of people continuing to ask where can i find these tools at i did a little research and i did put links in the description below okay uh just just so you know they're typically almost always if i have a tool in a video they are typically linked uh, in the description below all right so um if you're if you're looking for them that's where they're at all right hope you enjoyed yourself we'll see you next time at ac service tech channel